Welcome to a short episode of Eberhard Outdoors. Because this is very relevant right now, I'm going to do a little video on rattling. Uh, I do a lot of rattling this time of year, especially in secondary locations um, or along standing corn where as soon as the corn's cut, that location is going to be totally worthless because the security cover's gone. Uh, so if I got a scrape, if I'm hunting a scrape area underneath an oak or something like that, and and it borders a crop field, and that crop field is in standing corn, I will hunt the scrapes because you got security cover to security cover timber to to the uh, ag standing corn, and the timber is security cover on the inside of the timber. Uh, you know, a buck, a mature buck, might visit it during the daytime in a heavily pressured area. It's still not likely, but the possibilities there. I've shot several that way over the years, but it's been a lot of years I've been doing it. But uh, rattling works really, really well along the edge of a standing cornfield. Um, and it's not going to ruin your rut phase spots because the corn's going to be cut typically by the time the rut phases start. So, you know, it by hunting the edge of the standing corn and doing some rattle sequences, it's not going to affect your rut phase locations that when the corn is down are going to be back in the timber, back in the security cover bedding areas and stuff like that. Because the deer bed in the corn right now, a lot of deer will bed in the corn and you can actually draw them out of the corn. I've already, today is the 8th of October and I've already rattled two bucks that were three and a half year old bucks out of the standing corn within five yards of me. Uh, one was an eight and one was a nine. And they were both like 110, 115. And I didn't shoot either one of them. Uh, and I'm kind of kicking myself in the butt because uh, a 110 and a 115 up here is, is a monster. Uh, they're three year olds. Uh, so Anyway, I'm going to show you kind of how I do it because I don't do a hardcore rattle sequence like you see the TV guys because where they hunt, there's so many big dominant bucks. They can rattle very aggressively and not know what they're doing actually to bring them in. I mean, they rattle and it's a, just a solid noise session all the time. And that is not how bucks spar and fight. Uh, they make noise when they put their antlers together, but once their antlers together, that might take five to ten seconds, and then they push. So there's not a lot of noise when they're pushing. Might be a little time tickle because they're twisting their heads, but it's not a solid noise like you see on TV where there's just noise constantly. Um, so I'm going to show you uh, what I consider a, a very effective way in pressured areas where you don't have a lot of big mature bucks if you have any at all because big aggressive sounds will actually spook deer in heavily pressured areas because they're just not used to hearing that because they don't have 150 inch bucks fighting and sparring all the time like you do out west or on managed or some managed properties so i'm going to show you um in the tree i did a rattle sequence on camera to the best of my ability uh, on the camera in a tree the other day uh, when I was hunting along the edge of the cornfield in the rain. Uh, nothing came in on that particular hunt. Uh, but the day before that, I did rattle in a, a big 8-point, about a 115 8-point. And I had rattled in a couple days earlier a 9-point uh, in a different location uh, where some public land butted up to private ag and it came out of the corn. Uh, both of these came out of the corn. Uh, just about every deer I've seen, so every buck I've seen so far, when I've hunted standing corn budding up to timber, has came out of the corn. So bucks like bedding in the corn because they can stand up and eat, and it's it's awesome security cover. Once corn's down, everything changes. So this is this is my sequence. Now this is an old night and hail bag, and when I say old, this is probably thirty years old. I'm still using it. Uh, it had seven sticks in it when I bought it. Uh, these sticks are probably 11 inches long. Um, and the fabric's just about worn out. As you can see, I got a safety pin on the bottom because I wore a hole through the bottom from using it so much. So now when I rattle, I do it upside down. 
but I prefer bags. I took two of the sticks out, so there's only five sticks in here, and it's just hard. It's a hard wood. I prefer bags. They're less intrusive. Antlers tend to get in the way all the time, uh, especially on DIY hunts because they're big. They're they're cumbersome, and they just or hang them in the tree, and it's just something else hanging in the tree that's in the way. So bags you can put in a pocket in your backpack and just reach in and grab it when you need it. And, you know, it's just like calling elk. It's just like calling turkeys. You know, you don't have to be perfect. When, when you're calling animals, all animals sound different. Or there are animals that are going to sound different than others. I mean, I've heard bucks grunt and that to sound totally different than other bucks. Um, and elk, you know, calling elk. I've heard elk bugle and totally a strange bugle that you'd never want to replicate if you were trying to bugle yourself to call something in because it just doesn't sound right but it's a real bull making making a real bugle and they're just not always the same so it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect but you want the sequences to be correct there's got to be gaps when you're doing sparring sequences during this what I call the October lull when not a lot is happening most of the Mature bucks in in pressured areas are pretty damn nocturnal. They don't move much in the daylight outside of heavy security cover. But it is possible to rattle something in out of a standing cornfield. So I'm going to show it to you here, and then I'm also going to show it to you in a couple different sequences on an old video I've got, plus doing it actually in a tree uh, yesterday in the rain. So this is how I start. I start with a little bit of a noise, aggressive noise, to try and get their attention from a distance. And the quieter it is, you know, the stiller the night. The other night when I rattled in the eight point, it was dead flat calm. There was no noise whatsoever. So they can hear it from a longer distance. So if you've got a slight wind or if it's raining, you got to be a little bit louder with your initial rattling to get their attention from as far away as possible in the standing cornfield. So this is how I would start. And what you're trying to do is just replicate two bucks coming together, putting their antlers together, and then twisting their heads until they get to where they can push and then they push each other. And when they're pushing each other, they just, you might get that once in a while. And then they'll pull apart and then they'll have to put their heads back together again. But you want these gaps in between. You don't want it solid rattling. That's about it. Do that for about a, you know, 40 seconds to a minute, minute and a half, and then stop. And then about five minutes later, do the exact same thing. And once you've done it twice, let it go. Because typically if you've picked a location and it's along a standing corn field or along a crop field edge and it's in standing corn, so it's something you can actually hunt in a pressured area, you know, something will come out of the corn. Typically, you're going to do that at an oak tree or if there's an apple tree or fruit tree or some form of a mass tree along the edge of the corn that's physically dropping food. You know, there's very likely to be scrapes there at this time of year. There were six scrapes down the edge of this field uh, the other night. And so you also want to hunt the spot on the merit you chose it for. So just do two sequences. Wait, if you're hunting in the evening, wait till about... I'd say an hour before dark, 45 minutes, I'd say 45 minutes before dark before you do it, and then do two of those sequences about five minutes apart. If you're hunting in the morning, uh, do it about a half an hour after daybreak is when you want to do the first sequence, and then five minutes later do another and then let it go. Let the, let the location work on the merits you chose it for in the first place. Rattling is just a little bit of a perk. If you've got a really hot location, 
a long-standing cornfield, you got you know a primary scrape area with multiple scrapes within 10 yards of you or 15 yards of you down the edge, uh, you may not want to rattle at all the first hunt. You know, don't rattle at all the first hunt possibly, and then rattle the the next time you go in there. Let it work on the merit you chose it for the first time, because it's very possible because you got security cover to security cover, quick exit routes into security cover that they will come in on their own. Uh, but mature bucks in heavily pressured areas, man, they are, they're pretty nocturnal outside of their bedding areas. And I am wearing my scent lock gloves and I did put this on a hard surface. So I'm wearing my scent lock gloves because this is a bag and I don't want to get my hand odor on the fabric because this will be exposed when I'm actually using it in this bag has been washed so these were washed earlier now this bag is no longer made you can make your own bag uh, buy some really really thin fabric and buys buy a dowel rod these are probably a three quarter inch dowel rods hardwood you don't want pine and uh, just cut them off and there's these are all just round rods in here You could actually rattle with one end. That would be just fine right there. Other than the initial clash, you want the initial clash to be a little bit louder so you can get something's attention from a longer distance. For all you hunters that have heard buck sparring, and I hear it all the time, probably at, at least half a dozen times a year, buck sparring right in front of me, you know, That's what they sound like. Edge of some standing, some standing corn. It's about a half a dozen scrapes along this cornfield. Of course, most of them are being hit after dark. But because you got security cover of the standing corn, there's a big pond over here covered with green moss and these thick conifers behind me. You got security cover to security cover. So it's very possible to rattle in a mature buck out of this corn or out of these conifers because you got security cover to security cover. So they got a quick exit route. Yesterday afternoon, about seven o'clock, I rattled in a really nice A point, about a 115 incher. It's the biggest one I've got on camera. I've got 18 cameras out. I had him at five yards for, for 
probably five minutes trying to figure out where that noise came from. And that was the same deal. It was along the edge of a standing cornfield. There was about a half a dozen scrapes within a 40 yard distance by these burrows butting up to the standing corn. I actually drew on him once because 115 inch up here in central Michigan has a, at least a three year old. I've shot five and a half year olds that only had 105 inch racks up here and lots of times they can live to full maturity and never have a 100 inch rack. But it was a really pretty eight point. I think I have a picture of him on a camera. So if I show this video, I'll show you the picture of it. Another one at the front of that automata. One side is standing cornfield. There's my bow. Ready to go. for my rattle bag. There's scrapes all down the edge of this standing corn. This time of year, just about every standing corn field has scrapes down the edge of it. So I've got these conifers to the south. right there. There's another one at the front of that bottom hole. It's been raining pretty hard. It's still raining a little bit. I've seen two little bucks so far. Two four points. Out in the corn. And I saw a doe and two fawns, and another single doe out in the corn. Love hunting in this kind of rain. Just a nice, light rain. A little bit of a breeze. I'm hoping it kind of wind dies a little bit before dark so I can rattle and get a little bit farther response. Wind's blowing in my face, so not the direction where the wind is going to carry the noise a little bit farther. It's going to be not carried as far out into that standing corn. Last night when I rattled that bucket, it was dead quiet.
If interested, the links to many of the podcasts I've been on or for information about my two-day whitetail workshops that take place in March and April, please visit my website at deer-john.net. Thank you for watching another episode of Eberhard Outdoors and to receive notifications for future videos, please subscribe.